Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. I'm Zoltan and today I will be sharing some tips and tricks on how you can paint something similar to this in Clip Studio. And even if you are a Photoshop user, then make sure to stick around since the process is pretty much the same. If you want to have a successful image that gets the job done, then you need to nail the design first. Shape language and composition is key here. First up, I recommend to experiment with little thumbnails. Do little sketches on a sticky note or a very small size document so you won't get distracted by all the little details. You don't want to jump into a huge drawing and after a few hours to realize that it's not working. After I'm done with the design work, I do a much more cleaner drawing over it so everything is nice and tidy and after I'm done with it I do a flat underpainting under my line work just with the general big shapes and local colors I'm not really concerned with lighting and shadow at this point I just want to know what kind of color goes where and how will they harmonize in the end in this illustration, since it is a spot illustration, it will be featured on a white page or a white background on the internet. And I used the white background as a light source. The main directional light comes from above, but I use the white page around the characters as a sort of ambiental lighting that reflects a very minimal light on them so they will blend in and fit in much more on a white background. After I put down all of the local colors, I start to play around with the shadows and put in some darker areas. And after that, you can check these out, your values, by shifting the entire image into black and white. I use Windows 10 and in Windows you have now the shortcut of Windows Control C and all of your displays will turn black and white for this shortcut and when you want to go back you just hit again Control, not Control, Windows Control C and everything turns back to color. I also use a lot of reference when doing my illustrations. I usually search for reference photos on Pinterest I found it to be the best source of inspiration. And I basically did a palette on another document that I have on my other monitor with a ton of nature photos of lakes, frogs, dragonflies and all sorts of interesting stuff. And I also put it on this monitor, an image of a dragonfly that I really liked. I love the color combinations that it had on it and as you have seen it I have used it one on one, I did some color picking on it and I put down those colors in my illustration. This is a very nice and easy way to find interesting and cool color combinations that work. I think the best inspiration source is nature because you can't really find things there that don't work perfectly. The most exciting and beautiful color combinations exist in nature, so why not use it? I also put in some uh, colored spots on the background, since I found it that uh, the edge between the frog and the white background was very harsh. And I think this gives also a little bit of atmosphere to the entire illustration, but also creates a soft transition between the shapes. Also, a very lovely trick that I recommend everybody does is that when you take a color, for example, the blue of the dragonfly, you mix it in at different parts of the illustration. So when you have a color, you don't just use it at a single spot because it kind of creates a feeling of a little coloring book, for example, that all the local colors are just there and the colors don't interact at all with one another. When you observe nature or things around you, how they work, you see that all of the colors communicate. 
So when you are using a green, for example in this illustration, I usually use that green at multiple spots, even if it blends in just a little bit, but it's all but it's there at least, and the colors start to communicate with one another. This way your illustration feels much more professional and natural looking. Always remember that light mixes colors beautifully. So it is very important that all of your colors communicate with one another. When light is hitting a surface, that color is reflected back. So when I did the toad, you can see that I mixed in the green of the grasses with the color of his body. And also you can find that brown in the patches of grasses down below. So yet again, after adding the feet, I realized that I really should put something behind the frog. I did this on a completely different layer, behind the frog's layer. But as you can see, the blades of grass, how they are oriented, these shapes uh, draw your attention inside the illustration. For reference, I took some sample images from Google of some... I think they were bee wings, wings of bees. I didn't want to do the exact wings of a dragonfly since it is very noisy. They have a lot of detail in them, so I wanted to go with something much more simpler. I didn't want it to be too distracting. So I cut out a wing of a bee, put it over it and blended it in a bit with the rest of the illustration. And basically, based on it, I improvised some shapes that would work well with the rest of the illustration. After I nailed down the line work of the wings, the patterns, I started to play around with the opacity of the background layer for the wings. And for this, I use one of my favorite oil painting brushes. But instead of a color, I set it to paint negative space, so it will erase that layer. And after achieving a relatively okay opacity for it, I didn't want it to be too uniform, so I did it with this textured brush. I started to add over a bit of patches of colors here and there, so it won't be too uniform. I used a bit of blue so it would match the general color of the dragonfly much more and also to give the impression that maybe it is reflecting the colors of the water or the sky. And the final trick for this illustration would be to put over a paper texture. I created a new layer and dragged in a texture that I've scanned. It is a very rough paper and I try to achieve to bring all of it to a mid-tone. It is black and white, so it won't mess up my colors, but for this to be usable, you need to bring its values to the mid-tone, to be like 50% value. If it, uh, it's a bit darker or lighter, it can mess up your overall image and make it much more brighter or darker, and I didn't want it that, because I was very happy with my color values. So I put it on overlay and this basically only shows that little surface area noise in the paper and it is not so distracting. You need to play around with your values and also with the opacity of it, what works best. I don't recommend it to put it to full blast because it can be also very distracting when you see your image in a more, a bit more zoomed out and can really give that noisy look to it, which is not very appealing. But when you are watching your illustrations from closer, or maybe you print it out in a bigger size, you can see that it has a ton of little surface detail that brings everything together. If you have any questions or observations, then please leave a comment below. If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more exciting painting videos. Thank you for your loving support and keep on painting!